here are list several projects which are united not just by the fact that the time series analysis was applied to them, but also by the general goal to analyze underwater animals. First one used fixed sonar to study the patterns of occurrences of fish. Uh, the second one used depth measurements from biotelemetry tags in black sea bass. And the third one, which I'm presenting today, used passive acoustic monitoring to study behavior of dolphins. For each project, I'm listing principal investigators, but of course, the work could not be completed without the efforts and help from students, from our research staff who did all the field work and initial data processing. Actually, myself, I participated in one field trip and it was a very fun one in uh, July. We went with the Helen uh, Bailey's team offshore Ocean City, Maryland to replace gear for passive acoustic monitoring. These are the sites where sea pods are located and these devices continuously record clicks of dolphins that they use to navigate and to feed. And with this data, we were able to record occurrences of dolphins and the dolphin clicks or uh, the minutes with occurrences were organized into encounters. When there was a large time interval between encounters, above 37 minutes, we considered that the dolphins had left the area and a next encounter would start, and then the next one. By the frequency of clicks within each minute, the minutes were also classified as with foraging activity, without foraging activity, or unknown if there were no clicks recorded during that minute, but it was close to an encounter. <clears throat> When we actually went uh, on the cruise, we didn't see any dolphins, but this video was uploaded by user Steve C using uh, Helen Bailey's Chesapeake Dolphin Watch app. We addressed the hypothesis uh, using this data that the current foraging behavior increases the likelihood of further foraging behavior. And we used markup chains to show that. Markov chain is a model which deals with states in which the system is like positioned or located. And the probability of the next state depends only on the current state and does not depend on any past state. This is the Markov property. We observed this property when we joined the states of dolphins in two minute intervals. So the original states listed here would form a second order state Fn, Nn, Nu, and Uf. When we joined it like that, we applied the test to check that the market property is satisfied. One can think about it as a decorrelation effect. For example, we still observe correlation of states, what dolphins are doing within like three minutes, but when we observe four or more minutes, the correlation fades away. The graph here shows one of these mark Markov chains for bottlenose dolphins and for one of the sites. But the results are very consistent with other sites and across the species. What it shows here, it shows the nine states and transition probabilities between them. The green lines and uh, signs correspond to foraging. For example, here on top, when dolphins were uh, foraging for two minutes, they had the highest probability of 53% to continue foraging and lower probability to stop foraging, 29%, or to go to the unknown state of 18%. In a similar way, when dolphins were unknown and foraging in the next minute, they had the highest probability of 53% to continue foraging and lower probability, for example, to stop foraging, 26%. And again, the third uh, option is when they were not foraging and then encountered prey and started foraging. 
they had the highest probability of 68% to continue foraging. So these results show that dolphins actually do behave according to the area restricted search theory. And of course, we calculated the 95% confidence intervals for each of these probability reported in supplementary materials. We then looked at what made dolphins stay. We looked at the encounter lands of dolphins and tried to understand what would be the correlated variables. The encounter lands remind us a lot about the survival, such as how long did the dolphin stay in the area is essentially the same question statistically how long did a person leave and there is a developed apparatus in survival analysis and in actuarial science that studies the related problems for example i used this a model called cox proportional hazards model which studies the factors associated with probability of survival so factors are x beta are the coefficients, and we have the baseline hazard. We considered the following covariates, such as the proportion of foraging in the first third of an encounter, proportion of foraging in the second half, starting state season, and the kind of homogeneity of uh, foraging within an encounter. And these are the corresponding percentiles of all these covariates. Relative hazard of one, which corresponds here to median level of all covariates, means that there is no effect on the length of the encounter. Relative hazard above one means that there is a risk of ending an encounter. So everything with relative hazard above one corresponds to shorter encounters, and everything with the relative hazard below one corresponds to longer encounters. So if we come back to the question, what made them stay? We can see that here, the season of May, September corresponded to longer encounters. Also the proportion of foraging, if it was high in the beginning of the encounter in the first third, that also made dolphins actually stay in the area and feed further. And also uh, the, difference between the second and first half if it was not high for example below 0.13 the difference of proportions then it also corresponded to longer encounters again the modeling results here provided us with some support uh, of the hypothesis of area restricted search the results were consistent across species and across sites we recently developed a model that studied also the impact of storms on foraging behavior of dolphins.